backed by Smith Collection, Gatto, Getty Images. One of the more remarkable aspects of Facebook's announcement last week that it would launch its own dating service was the attire of the man who broke the news, Mark Zuckerberg had taken the stage at the company's F8 developer conference wearing mauve in place of his usual grey. After dealing with sustained backlash from various election meddling scandals, Zuckerberg has redoubled his efforts to reassure the masses that Facebook has reformed, using the conference to hype up again lurk less threatening Facebook that gives users more autonomy and control. The company's announcement of a major management shakeup, the first in its nearly 15-year history, would seem to be in the same vein, rearranging Facebook into three core areas and streamlining its vision across products. In reality, however, the shuffle may be as superficial a change as Zuckerberg's shirt. The order of operations within Facebook may be new, but almost all of the key players are the same, not to mention still largely white and male. Chief Product Officer Chris Cox will lead the newly minted family of apps division, which groups all of Facebook's apps, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Messenger, under a single umbrella. Collectively, the four apps reach billions of users every month and generate the bulk of the company's annual advertising revenue. Chris Cox has been in charge of product unilaterally at Facebook in a way that's almost unprecedented for tech companies, one investor told me. He and Mark are close, and now he's cemented his position as the top deputy for product at Facebook. Each app will see its leadership reshuffled as well. After the departure of WhatsApp co-founder Jam Coom last month, the encrypted messaging service will be taken over by Chris Daniels. Stan Shidnovsky will head up Messenger, while Adam Misery, who for years ran News Feed, is moving on to become Instagram's VP of product. That leaves the somewhat floundering news feed in the hands of John Eakman. A second division, new platforms and infrastructure, will be led by Facebook CTO Mike Schroepfer, and consists of Facebook's experimental offerings. Andrew Bosworth will lead virtual reality and augmented reality efforts, and David Marcus, who used to run Messenger, is now running a newly announced Facebook blockchain unit. A third branch, Central Product Services, will consist of product management, ads, analytics, growth, and integrity, the company's core functionality. It will be led by VP of Growth Javier Olivan. Facebook hasn't offered a public explanation for the changes, so it's unclear whether the reorganization was a series of disconnected moves announced all at once, or whether it's based on some grand unifying theory related to Facebook's efforts at reform. If the latter, this particular move is unlikely to usher in real change, the new management adds nothing novel in the way of ideology, with many members plugged into Facebook's ethos from the start. But then, what CEO would want to introduce an actual management shakeup at a financially successful company that repeatedly surpasses Wall Street's expectations, with 40% year-over-year revenue growth? What does seem clear is that Facebook is making an effort to unite its vast array of holdings, consolidating Zuckerberg's power. Until now, each of Facebook's products has more or less operated independently, it's not unusual to speak to someone who doesn't know Instagram is owned by Facebook because their brand identities are so unique. This has no doubt been to the company's advantage, particularly in the wake of recent privacy scandals that tarnished Facebook but didn't seem to touch Facebook-owned products like Instagram and WhatsApp. The result, another investor told me, could be good and bad for Facebook. Good because it makes it easier to manage these apps when they're all centralized, but bad because you risk losing autonomy.